hyphen. The hyphen is a punctuation mark used to join words and to separate syllables of a single word. The use of hyphens is called hyphenation. The hyphen should not be confused with dashes, which are longer and have different uses, or with the minus sign, which is also longer. In terms of an orthographic concept, the hyphen is a single entity. In terms of character encoding and display, that entity is represented by any of several characters and glyphs, including hard hyphens, soft or optional hyphens, and non-breaking hyphens, depending on the context of use, discussed below. Although, as mentioned above, hyphens are not to be confused with n dashes and minus signs, there are some overlaps in usage, in which either a hyphen or an n dash may be acceptable, depending on user preference. Discussed below, and in character encoding, which often uses the same character, called a hyphen minus, to represent both the hyphen and minus sign entities. Discussed below. Etymology The term derives from ancient Greek hyphen, hyphen, contracted from opoen, hypohen, in one, literally under one. The term, e, euphen he, hyphen, was used for a carrot like, sign written below two consecutive letters to indicate that they belong to the same word, when it was necessary to avoid ambiguity before the space was in regular use. Usage in English Hyphens are mostly used to break single words into parts, or to join ordinarily separate words into single words. Spaces should not be placed between a hyphen and either of the words it connects except when using a suspended or hanging hyphen, for example 19th and 20th century writers. A definitive collection of hyphenation rules does not exist. Rather, different manuals of style prescribe different usage guidelines. The rules of style that apply to dashes and hyphens have evolved to support ease of reading in complex constructions. Editors often accept deviations from them that will support, rather than hinder, ease of reading. The use of the hyphen in English compound nouns and verbs has, in general, been steadily declining. Compounds that might once have been hyphenated are increasingly left with spaces or are combined into one word. In 2007, the sixth edition of the Shorter Oxford English Dictionary removed the hyphens from 16000 entries, such as fig leaf now fig leaf, pot belly, now pot belly, and pigeonhole, now pigeonhole. The advent of the Internet and the increasing prevalence of computer technology have given rise to a subset of common nouns that may have been hyphenated in the past, for example toolbar, hyperlink, pastebin. Despite decreased use, hyphenation remains the norm in certain compound modifier constructions and, amongst some authors, with certain prefixes, See below. Hyphenation is also routinely used to avoid unsightly spacing in justified texts, for example, in newspaper columns. Separating Justification and line wrapping When flowing text, it is sometimes preferable to break a word in half so that it continues on another line rather than moving the entire word to the next line. The word may be divided at the nearest breakpoint between syllables, and a hyphen inserted to indicate that the letters form a word fragment, rather than a full word. This allows more efficient use of paper, allows more regular appearance of right side margins without requiring spacing adjustments, reduces the problem of rivers, and avoids the need to erase long words begun near the end of a line that do not fit. This kind of hyphenation is most useful when the width of the column of text is very narrow. For example, the details of doing this properly are complex and language dependent and can interact with other orthographic and typesetting practices. Hyphenation algorithms, when employed in concert with dictionaries, are sufficient for all but the most formal texts. See also justification. Prefixes and suffixes Prefixes, such as de, pre, re, and non and suffixes, such as less, like, ness, and hood, may or may not be hyphenated. The unhyphenated style is also called closed up or solid. A rule of thumb is that they are not hyphenated unless the lack of a hyphen hurts clarity, specifically, 
clarity at first glance rather than clarity upon a second look or a moment's pause. The clear-unclear distinction involves some subjectivity, because what is instantly clear to one reader may not be to another, depending on, for example, subject matter familiarity. Nonetheless, consensus among users of a language often reduces that subjectivity for many words. This is explained further below. Many long-established words, such as disgusted, degrade, and refresh, do not require a hyphen because they are fully fused to the point that their first syllable is barely even thought about as having a prefix function, even though in many such words, if one stops to think about it, one can clearly see it. Many other words, such as prewashed or repainted, may not be quite so fully fused, the prefix function may be slightly more prominent in consciousness, but nonetheless they require no hyphen, because, one, most readers recognize the closed-up word as a familiar one and thus have no trouble parsing the syllables, and, two, if all such words were hyphenated, the many hyphens throughout the text would seem superfluous. In contrast, for some other words, the closed-up style may not be as clear, and the hyphen can ensure clarity and avoid awkwardness, including odd appearance, or misguided parsing of syllables. An example of avoiding misguided parsing would be to hyphenate the word co-worker, versus co-worker, to prevent the reader's eye being caught automatically by the letter group cow, which might suggest cow, slash kau slash before backtracking and reparsing occurred. In such cases, Styling varies depending on individual preference, regional preference, occupational speciality, or style guide preference, because the definition of awkwardness for any given word depends on who is judging it. Words for which prefix hyphenation is least subjective, to the point that closed up style is widely rejected, are of several classes. One such class consists of a few words that require a hyphen to distinguish them from other words that would otherwise be homographs such as recreation, fun or sport, versus recreation, the act of creating again, retreat, turn back, versus retreat, give therapy again, and unionized, not in ion form, versus unionized, organized into trade unions. The other classes are those in which the prefix is applied to, 1, a proper, capitalized, noun or adjective, un-American, de-Stalinization. 2, an acronym, anti-TNF antibody, non-SI units. Or, 3, a number, pre-1949 diplomacy, pre-1492 cartography. Style guides codify rules to minimize inconsistency, the ultimate goal of which is to have the style unnoticed by the reader, that is, to avoid catching the reader's eye either with trivial differences or with a lot of superfluous hyphens. The style guide rules allow exceptions to avoid awkwardness. For example, a guide will typically say to follow Dictionary X's style for any word entered therein, and for words not entered, to close up by default and thus hyphenate only to avoid awkwardness. Such a rule successfully codifies almost all choices and thus leaves little to discretion except a few rare or neologistic words, which are safely hyphenated. This ensures high intradocument and interdocument consistency. Rules about avoiding doubled vowels or doubled consonants are often mentioned in style guides. These appropriately cascade only downstream, not upstream, of the follow dictionary X rule, because most dictionaries close up many well-established doubled letter pairs. For example, any style that follows Merriam-Webster's collegiate dictionary thus closes up preempt, re-examine, de-emphasize, non-negotiable, post-transfusion, and hundreds of others. As mentioned earlier, the definition of awkwardness for any given word is inherently subjective but nonetheless also subject to consensus. For example, re-examine and de-emphasize are accepted as non-awkward by a broad consensus. To prefer the hyphenated styling is a matter of opinion, but to insist that the solid styling is awkward would be considered pedantic by many educated readers. However, some doublings attract smaller majorities than others in such a consensus. With the co-worker co-worker example, mentioned earlier, or with anti-inflammatory anti-inflammatory, many readers may consider solid styling non-awkward whereas plenty of others don't, and in such cases, dictionary styles may vary, Dorland's, anti-inflammatory. Merriam-Webster's Medical Dictionary, anti-inflammatory.
tripled letters rarely occur, but when they do, the hyphen is considered mandatory, thus shell-like, not shell-like. There is a trend that over decades, words that once were hyphenated for clarity lose the hyphen as their familiarity grows. An excellent example is email email. The number of people who find email awkward dropped from the 1990s to the 2010s, and thus the hyphen has been dropped increasingly. For some instances, the consensus depends on occupational speciality or subspecialty. Although proto-oncogen is still hyphenated by most users, and by both Dawlins and Merriam-Webster's medical, the solid styling, protooncogene, is gaining popularity, with oncologists and geneticists, for whom the term is most familiar, leading the way. A hyphen can clarify that two adjacent vowels, whether two of the same letter, for example, u, ye, or two different letters, for example, e, a, e, are pronounced separately rather than being merged in a diphthong. The question is how necessary the clarification is. Thus, hyphenated de escalate and cooperation have plenty of support. Consensus wise, plenty of users consider their hyphens as not superfluous, although solid de escalate and cooperation have plenty of support as well, plenty of users consider the hyphens superfluous. Consensus for styling varies by class, subclass, and even by individual word with the common theme being that internal punctuation drops out of any combination judged as instantly recognizable enough in its context not to need it. As classes, there are doubling, namely, or, ye, ye, you, 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 and non-doubling, for example, a plus e, a plus i, a plus o, e plus e, e plus i, e plus o. Several subclasses exist. There are combinations that are not rare in English as diphthongs and also not rare as non-diphthongs for users willing to style prefixed words solidly, such as e and e. Regarding de plus e re plus e pre plus e and de plus i re plus i pre plus i, nearly everyone agrees that some fully fused examples, such as reiterate and reinforce, need no hyphen, but other examples have more evenly split pluralities, such as re-examine re-examine or de-emphasize de-emphasize. There are combinations that are rare in English as diphthongs, for example, or and e, but not rare in prefixed words for those willing to style them solidly. And thus either they hardly need clarification within prefixed words, the solidification argument. Thus intra-arterial and anti-inflammatory, or they need a hyphen to avoid looking like rare diphthongs, which are odd looking, because rare, the hyphenation argument, thus intra-arterial and anti-inflammatory. A diuresis can also sometimes be used either to indicate non-diphthong status, as in cooperation and naive, or to indicate non-silent terminal E, as in Bronte, but there are several implicit boundaries on this style's use. It is now rare, its peak of popularity was in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and it was never applied extensively across the language, only a handful of examples, including cooperation, naive, and Bronte are encountered with any appreciable frequency in English. For whatever reason, it never had any popularity in the de plus e re plus e pre plus e or de plus i re plus i pre plus i subclasses, thus never re-examine, reiterate, de-emphasize, or others, although they might have been useful. Many users, and various dictionaries, consider the diuresis optional in naive naive, because not necessary for the reader to recognize the word and now I've draws attention to itself as a style that is simply never used, although comprehensible. For deity and deify, only solid styling, no hyphen or diuresis, is normative. Syllabification and spelling Hyphens are occasionally used to denote syllabification, as in syllabification. Most British and North American dictionaries use an interpunct, sometimes called a middle dot, or hyphenation point, for this purpose, as in syllabi fecation. This allows the hyphen to be reserved only for places where a hard hyphen is intended, for example, self-conscious, unself-conscious, long-standing. Similarly, hyphens may be used to indicate a word is being or should be spelled. For example, word spells word. Joining Compound modifiers 
compound modifiers are groups of two or more words that jointly modify the meaning of another word. When a compound modifier other than an adverb adjective combination appears before a term, the compound modifier is often hyphenated to prevent misunderstanding, such as in American football player or little celebrated paintings. Without the hyphen, there is potential confusion about whether the writer means a player of American football, or an American player of football, and whether the writer means paintings that are little celebrated, or celebrated paintings that are little. Compound modifiers can extend to three or more words, as an ice cream flavored candy, and can be adverbial as well as adjectival, spine tinglingly frightening. However, if the compound is a familiar one, it is usually unhyphenated. For example, at least one style guide prefers the construction high school students to high school students. Although the expression is technically ambiguous, students of a high school slash school students that are on drugs slash students of grand physical stature slash students elevated to great altitude, it would normally be formulated differently if other than the first meaning were intended. Now noun compound modifiers may also be written without a hyphen when no confusion is likely grade point average and department store manager. When the modifier is an adverb ending in li or when one of the parts is a proper noun or a proper adjective, there is no hyphen, for example a badly written novel, or a South American actor. When a compound modifier follows the term to which it applies, a hyphen is typically not used if the compound is a temporary compound. For example, that gentleman is well respected, not that gentleman is well respected or a patient-centered approach was used, but the approach was patient-centered. But permanent compounds, found as head words in dictionaries, are treated as invariable, so if they are hyphenated in the cited dictionary, the hyphenation will be used in both attributive and predicative positions. For example, a cost-effective method was used, and the method was cost-effective, Cost effective as a permanent compound that is hyphenated as a headword in various dictionaries. In the 19th century, it was common to hyphenate adverb adjective modifiers with the adverb ending in li, in other words, producing the character stringly. However, this has become rare. For example, wholly owned subsidiary and quickly moving vehicle are unambiguous, because the adverbs clearly modify the adjectives, quickly cannot modify vehicle. However, if an adverb can also function as an adjective, then a hyphen may be or should be used for clarity, depending on the style guide. For example, the phrase more important reasons, reasons that are more important is distinguished from more important reasons, additional important reasons, where more is an adjective. Similarly, more beautiful scenery, with a mass noun, is distinct from more beautiful scenery. In contrast, the hyphen in a more important reason a more important reason is not necessary, because the syntax cannot be misinterpreted. A few words, including well and early, attract a special attention in this category. The hyphen in well noun, such as in well differentiated cells, might very reasonably be judged too superfluous to stit, the syntax cannot be misinterpreted, and yet plenty of style guides call for it and because early has both adverbial and adjectival senses, its hyphenation can attract attention. Some editors, comparing with advanced stage disease and adult onset disease, like the parallelism of early stage disease and early onset disease. Similarly, the hyphen in little celebrated paintings clarifies that one is not speaking of little paintings. Hyphens are usually used to connect numbers and words in modifying phrases, such as in dimensional measurements of weight, size, and time, under the rationale that, like other compound modifiers, they take hyphens in attributive position, before the modified noun, although not in predicative position, after the modified noun. This is applied whether numerals or words are used for the numbers. Thus 28-year-old woman and 28-year-old woman or 32-foot wingspan and 32-foot wingspan, but the woman is 28 years old and a wingspan of 32 feet. However, with symbols for SI units, such as M or KG, as opposed to the names of these units, such as meter or kilogram, both the International Bureau of Weights and Measures in the U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology recommend use without a hyphen, a 25 kilogram sphere, 
which is why some scientists get annoyed when such hyphens are added to their article when it is edited for a journal using AMA style, whose hyphenation of these symbols bucks SI style. When the units are spelled out, this recommendation does not apply. A 25 kg sphere, a roll of 35 mm film. In spelled out fractions, hyphens are usually used when the fraction is used as an adjective but not when it is used as a noun, thus two thirds majority and one eighth portion but I drank two thirds of the bottle or I kept three quarters of it for myself. However, at least one major style guide hyphenates spelled out fractions invariably, whether adjective or noun. In English, an n dash sometimes replaces the hyphen in hyphenated compounds if either of his constituent parts is already hyphenated or contains a space, for example, San Francisco area residents, hormone receptor positive cells, cell cycle related factors, and public school private school rivalries. A commonly used alternative style is the hyphenated string, hormone receptor positive cells, cell cycle related factors. For other aspects of n dash versus hyphen usage, c dash greater than n dash. Object verbal noun compounds. When an object is compounded with a verbal noun, such as egg beater, a tool that beats eggs, the result is sometimes hyphenated. Some authors do this consistently, others only for disambiguation. In this case, egg beater, egg beater, and egg beater are all common. An example of an ambiguous phrase appears in they stood near a group of alien lovers, which without a hyphen implies that they stood near a group of lovers who were aliens. They stood near a group of alien lovers clarifies that they stood near a group of people who loved aliens, as alien can be either an adjective or a noun. On the other hand, in the phrase a hungry pizza lover, the hyphen will often be omitted, a hungry pizza lover, as pizza cannot be an adjective and the phrase is therefore unambiguous. Similarly, there's a man eating shark in these waters is nearly the opposite of there's a man eating shark at table 6. The first is a shark, and the second a man. A government monitoring program is a program that monitors the government, whereas a government monitoring program is a government program that monitors something else. Other compounds Connecting hyphens are used in a large number of miscellaneous compounds, other than modifiers, such as in Lily of the Valley, Cockahoop, Clever Clever, Tittle Tattle and Orangutan. Usage is often dictated by convention rather than fixed rules, and hyphenation styles may vary between authors. For example, Orangutan is also written as Orangutan or Orangutan, and Lily of the Valley may or may not be hyphenated. Some married couples compose a new surname, sometimes referred to as a double-barreled name, for their new family by combining their two surnames with a hyphen. Jane Doe and John Smith might become Jane and John Smith Doe, or Doe Smith, for instance. In some countries only the woman hyphenates her birth surname, appending her husband's surname. Suspended hyphens A suspended hyphen, also called a suspensive hyphen, or hanging hyphen, or less commonly a dangling, or floating hyphen may be used when a single base word is used with separate, consecutive, hyphenated words which are connected by, and, or, or to. For example, 19th century and 20th century may be written as 19th and 20th century. This usage is now common in English and specifically recommended in some style guides. Although less common, suspended hyphens are also used in English when the base word comes first, such as an investor owned and operated. Usages such as applied and sociolinguistics, instead of applied linguistics and sociolinguistics are frowned on in English. The Indiana University Style Guide uses this example and says do not take a shortcut when the first expression is ordinarily open. That is, ordinarily two separate words. This is different, however, from instances where prefixes that are normally closed up, styled solidly, are used suspensively. For example, Preoperative and postoperative becomes pre and postoperative, not pre and postoperative, when suspended. Some editors prefer to avoid suspending such pairs, choosing instead to write out both words in full. Other uses 
a hyphen may be used to connect groups of numbers, such as in dates, see below, telephone numbers or sports scores. It can also be used to indicate a range of values, although many styles prefer an n dash, see examples at dash greater than n dash greater than ranges of values. The hyphen is sometimes used to hide letters in words, censoring, as in GD, although an n dash can be used as well, GD. The hyphen is often used in reduplicatives. Varied meanings Some strong examples of semantic changes caused by the placement of hyphens. Disease causing poor nutrition, meaning poor nutrition that causes disease. Disease causing poor nutrition, meaning a disease that causes poor nutrition. A man eating shark is a shark that eats humans. A man eating shark is a man who is eating shark meat. 300-year-old trees are an indeterminate number of trees that are 300 years old. 300-year-old trees are three trees that are 100 years old. 300-year-old trees are 300 trees that are one year old. Origin and history The first use of the hyphen, and its origination, is often credited to Johannes Gutenberg of Mainz, Germany circa 1455 with the publication of his 42-line Bible. Examination of an original copy on vellum, Hubei Index No. 35, in the U.S. Library of Congress shows that Gutenberg's movable type was set justified in a uniform style, 42 equal lines per page. The Gutenberg printing press required words made up of individual letters of type to be held in place by a surrounding non-printing rigid frame. Gutenberg solved the problem of making each line the same length to fit the frame by inserting a hyphen as the last element at the right side margin. This interrupted the letters in the last word, requiring the remaining letters be carried over to the start of the line below. His hyphen appears throughout the Bible as a short, double line inclined to the right at a 60-degree angle. In medieval times and the early days of printing, the predecessor of the comma was a slash. As the hyphen ought not to be confused with this, a double slash was used, this resembling an equal sign tilted like a slash. Writing forms changed with time, and included the full development of the comma, so the hyphen could become one horizontal stroke. Those dictionaries based on the second edition of the Merriam-Webster dictionary used one small, slightly tilted slash for a hyphen which they added at the end of a line where they broke the word, but used a double slash much like the very old symbol, to indicate a hyphen that was actually a part of the phrase but just happened to fall at the end of the line. This double slash would be used in hyphenated phrases in the middle of the text as well, so that there would be no confusion. In computing Hyphen minus In the ASCII character encoding, the hyphen is encoded as character 45. This character is actually called the hyphen minus, and it is also used as the minus sign in for dashes. In Unicode, the hyphen minus is encoded as U plus 002D, so that Unicode remains compatible with ASCII. However, Unicode also encodes the hyphen and minus separately, as U plus 2010, and U plus 2212. Respectively, along with the M dash U plus 2014, N dash U plus 2013 and other related characters. The hyphen minus is a general purpose character which attempts to fulfill several roles, and wherever optimal typography is desired, the preferred hyphen, minus, or other symbol should be used instead. For example, compare 4 plus 3. 2 equals 5, minus, and 4 plus 3 minus 2 equals 5, hyphen minus. In most fonts the hyphen minus will not have the optimal width, thickness, or vertical position, whereas the minus character will. However, the Unicode hyphen is awkward to enter on most keyboards, so the hyphen minus character remains very common. They are often used instead of dashes or minus signs in situations where the preferred characters are unavailable, such as ASCII-only text, where the preferred characters take effort to enter, via dialog boxes or multi-key, unmemorable keyboard shortcuts or when the writer is unaware of the distinction. Some writers use two hyphen minuses, to represent a dash in ASCII text. The ASCII hyphen minus character is also often used when specifying command line options. 
the character is usually followed by one or more letters that indicate specific actions. Typically it is called a dash or switch in this context. Various implementations of the JetOp function to pass command line options additionally allow the use of two hyphen minus characters, to specify long option names that are more descriptive than their single letter equivalents. Another use of hyphens is that employed by programs written with pipelining in mind, a single hyphen may be recognized in lieu of a file name, with the hyphen then serving as an indicator that a standard stream, instead of a file, is to be worked with. Hard and soft hyphens Although software, hyphenation algorithms, can often automatically make decisions on when to hyphenate a word at a line break, it is also sometimes useful for the user to be able to insert cues for those decisions, which are dynamic in the online medium, given that text can be reflowed. For this purpose, the concept of a soft hyphen, discretionary hyphen, optional hyphen, was introduced, allowing such manual specification of a place where a hyphenated break is allowed but not forced. That is, it does not force a line break in an inconvenient place when the text is later reflowed. In contrast, a hyphen that is always displayed and printed is called a hard hyphen, although some use this term to refer to a non-breaking hyphen. See below. Soft hyphens are inserted into the text at the positions where hyphenation may occur. It can be a tedious task to insert the soft hyphens by hand, and tools using hyphenation algorithms are available that do this automatically. Current modules of the cascading style sheets, CSS, standard provide language-specific hyphenation dictionaries. Non-breaking hyphens the word segmentation rules of most text systems consider a hyphen to be a word boundary and a valid point at which to break a line when flowing text. However, this is not always desirable behavior, especially when it could lead to ambiguity, such as in the examples given before, where recreation and recreation would be indistinguishable, or in languages other than English, for example a line break at the hyphen in Irish and TFR or Romanian essay would be undesirable. For this purpose, Unicode also encodes a non-breaking hyphen, non-breaking hyphen, no-break hyphen, as U plus 2011, coded for by a number 8209. This character looks identical to the regular hyphen, but it is treated as a letter by word processors, namely that the hyphenated word will not be divided at the hyphen should this fall at what would be the end of a line of text. Instead, the whole hyphenated word either will remain in full at the end of the line or will go in full to the beginning of the next line. The non-breaking space exists for similar reasons. Usage and date notation In parts of Europe, the hyphen is used to delineate parts within a written date. Germans and Slavs also used Roman numerals for the month. 14 7 17 89, for example, is one way of writing the first Bastille Day, though this usage is rapidly falling out of favor. Plaques on the wall of the Moscow Kremlin are written this way. Use of hyphens, as opposed to the slashes used in the English language, is specified for international standards. International Standard ISO 8601, which was accepted as European Standard EN 28601 and incorporated into various typographic style guides. For example, DIN 5008 in Germany, brought about a new standard using the hyphen. Now all official European governmental documents use this. These norms prescribe writing dates using hyphens, July 14, 1789 is the new way of writing the first Bastille Day. This is also the typical date format used in large parts of Eastern Europe and Asia, although sometimes with other separators than the hyphen. This method has gained influence within North America, as most common computer file systems make the use of slashes difficult or impossible. DOS, OS slash 2 and Windows simultaneously support both backslash and slash as directory separators, but slash is also used to introduce and separate switches to shell commands, unless reconfigured to use the hyphen minus in DOS. Unix-like systems use slash as a directory separator and while backslash is legal in file names, it is awkward to use as the shell uses it as an escape character. Unix also uses a space followed by a hyphen to introduce switches. 
apart from the separator used the non-year form of the date format is also identical to the standard American representation. The ISO date format sorts correctly using a default collation, which can be useful in many computing situations including for file names, so many computer systems and IT technicians have switched to this method. The government of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, for example, has switched to this method. Unicode Apart from dash and minus sign, Unicode has multiple hyphen characters. U plus 2010, hyphen, HTML, and number 8208, U plus 002D, hyphen minus, HTML, and number 45. Still not to be confused with U plus 2212. Minus sign, U plus 2000 AD soft hyphen, HTML, and number 173. And shy, U plus 2011, non breaking hyphen, HTML, and number 8209, U plus 2043, hyphen bullet, HTML and number 8259, and in non-Latin scripts, U plus 058A, Armenian hyphen, HTML, and number 1418, U plus 1400, Canadian syllabics hyphen, HTML, and number 5120, U plus 1806 Mongolian Todo soft hyphen, HTML, and number 6150. Unicode distinguishes the hyphen point from the general interpunct. U plus 2027. Hyphenation point, HTML, and number 8231. U plus 00B7 middle dot, HTML, and number 183. And mid dot. See interpunct for more round characters.